Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to my channel. I am Edwin, and I am the Pretty Green Vinyl Guy. And um, I'm just going to keep this brief because, you know what? It doesn't matter that I haven't made a video in six months. Because, um, you know what? That doesn't matter. I do this for fun. I do this when I can. I do this when the notion hits me. And um, But one thing I have been doing is buying a lot of vinyl <laughs> and uh, that part has never changed and in fact in 2023 pardon me uh in 2023 i probably bought uh quite a few new releases maybe more than some other years and to be totally honest i think some of the best music i've i've listened to that's new music in quite some time so as everyone else is doing their top 10 list I'm actually going to do my top 10 list in order of ranking of my favorite new purchases that were released in 2023 that were, uh, but that was a new album, not a, a reissue or that kind of thing. So um, I've actually got 11. So let's start with Paul Simon's Seven Palms. Now, I've seen a lot of these lists already on YouTube. And this album has made it into quite a few. I, I did really like it. Um, I really appreciated the, um, the honesty, the, um, you know, his obvious connection with his faith. And, um, you know, and that's all cool. Um, I did hear him interviewed on Howard Stern and I thought it was a brilliant interview. And that certainly gave more insight into the record. Um, I guess basically it's it's kind of one song, you know, cut up into seven psalms. Uh, the guitar playing is amazing. And I think Paul Simon is a very underrated uh, acoustic guitar player. I think he's one of the best. And I did learn in that Paul Simon, or sorry, in that Howard Stern interview, that, um, you know, when they when Simon and Garfunkel put out their first album, it kind of flopped and Paul fled to Britain to kind of get away from the New York press to sort of, um, you know, just immerse himself in something. And he kind of immersed himself in that whole, you know, British um, folk scene. And he kind of picked up this finger picking style. And then when he came back to America and him and Art re- um re-recorded some songs and and in another album that's where you started to hear that beautiful sound so that's my number 11 paul simon seven psalms um a worthy worthy listen my number 10 is iggy pop every loser um this is a really great album it's a great return for iggy pop someone i've really really you know, love for many, many, many years. Um, it's kind of those, like, two great songs, one, and eh, two great songs, one, and eh. So the album doesn't have the consistency all the way through. Frenzy, the opening track, is a blinder. It's a brilliant song. Uh, the production on this is absolutely stellar. The band is stellar. The band is uh, Dave Navarro. Taylor Hawkins and Chris Chaney. Um, all amazing. Taylor Hawkins, of course, from Foo Fighters. Chris Chaney was the basis for Alanis Morissette and also Jane's Addiction. And Dave Navarro doesn't need any introduction. Obviously, you can see the three of them are all connected in that way. Um, just a really uh, good produced album. This is produced by Andrew Watt, who is the producer on another album uh, coming up. So Iggy Pop, Every Loser. Number nine, Jason Isbell and the 400 Unit. Um, I am not a country person at all. But I, you hear so much about Jason Isbell that, um, you know, curiosity killed the cat. 
and um, I picked this up and I my first listen I didn't like it at all and then one night I was sitting in here and um, just you know the lights down glass of wine just chilling put this on I thought I got to get into this album because I've heard so much good things about it and you know it is really good it has really grown on me um it's singer songwriter it's got a southern it's got a southern country kind of vibe to it um but i think i will grow to really love this album and um i think if i could ever see him live because i understand he's spectacular live i think that would be the the deal clencher so i don't know if that's possible because you know living on the west coast of canada i'm not sure how many times he comes here but uh great great album um just you know something that my taste had to acquire but that being said you know it's my number nine pick of the year uh jason isbell and the 400 units weather veins this is another artist um i've never listened to before but you hear the name everywhere and uh, this is uh, Sufjan Stevens. And um, this is uh, Javelin. And um, I got to say, this is a very, very good album. Um, it's wonderful. The songs, the melodies, the harmonies, um, the writing. It's a, it's a fantastic album. The artwork. Um, Again, you know, it's it's new in my wheelhouse. It's something that I wanted to uh, listen to because I want to learn. I want to experience new things. And again, I've heard so much about this album. I've seen it on other lists. And um, it's very, very good. And again, I think this will grow on me. I think I will like this album more and more and more. You have to be in the mood. It's, it's definitely, a, a, like Jason Isbell, it's a listening album. Um, it's not a sing-along album if you know what I mean. So, um, yeah, Sufjan Stevens, uh, Javelin. All right, uh, one that's made a lot of lists. Where am I at here? 11, 10, 9, 11, 10, 9, 8, number 7. The Hackney Diamonds, The Rolling Stones. Um, this is the other album that was produced by Andrew Watt. And um, it's a, you know, he's a very tight producer. He's heavy on the drum beats. And um, I was very impressed with this. Like a lot of people have said, am I going to like it in two years from now? I don't know. You know, is it a bit of like in your face right now and everybody's kind of talking about it and you're kind of excited about it? But I do really like it. I think the first side is perfect. Um, I think the second side has some highs and has some lows. I think the Lady Gaga, Sweet Sounds of Heaven is excellent. I think Gaga is great on that. And, um, I got, you know, overall it's a great album. It's a, I, I listen to it a lot when I'm working out and driving in the car. That's how I sort of got into really listening to it. I can tell you if you're, if you're planning on seeing the Stones, uh, on their upcoming tour, they are not going to sound like this because this is such a very well produced album and there is no way that these 80 year old guys are going to sound like this on stage. They're not. Uh, the production on this album is stellar. It just boom, hits you in the face as soon as you drop the needle. And that's what I liked about it. Rolling Stones, Hacky Diamonds. Uh, next up, Depeche Mode. Uh, Memento More, their first album without Andy Fletcher, their longtime member, you know, and then there was two, right? And um, I, I, I've been a Depeche Mode fan since day one. They're in my wheelhouse. They're in my age category. I've seen them live several times. I did not go to this tour. They did come to Vancouver recently. I kind of regret actually not going because when the tour was announced way back when, the album hadn't been out yet, and I was like, you know, do I need to see Depeche Mode do the same thing over and over again? And then I got a hold of this through in the summer, and I really enjoyed it. It's 
it's Depeche Mode. Uh, it doesn't alter from their wheelhouse too much. Uh, but you know what? It's what they do very well. And it's a very good album. It's um, obviously it's dark. It's, you know, it's talking about death and, you know, uh, all those things. But I've got to say, I really, really did like this album. And it's a it's a pleasurable listen all the way through. Um, very, very good. Number five. Uh, this was a surprise for me. Uh, not a surprise because I really do like this band. And I can't remember the name of the album, but several years ago, their last album made my top ten of the year. And this is The Pretenders. Um, this is uh, Relentless. This is a, another very well-produced album. This is David Wrench. I don't know what else he's done. I should have looked that up. But um, the young guitar player on this album that Chrissy Hine has brought in to sort of, uh, you know, up the power of the band is phenomenal. And um, again, side one is pretty perfect. And um, I really, really like this album. I, I gave this a lot of plays. This is a lot of, hmm, what am I going to listen to today? I know that new Pretenders album. I love the artwork. The artwork's great. Look at that, a kid with an eye patch and oversized boxing gloves. I mean, that's a great image. Um, this is a really good album. And I, I got to say, like, the last two, three Pretenders albums are really, really good. And Chrissy Hine is showing no sign of slowing down. And um, I got to say, yeah, this is a favorite. Very, very good. Uh, number four is Wilco and Cousin. And this is their best album in a long, long time. Um, I mean, I love Wilco's early, early albums. And this is kind of a return to that. And that's probably why I really like that. The Yankee Foxtrot type of sound. Again, this is another one that I tended to put on when I didn't know what else I wanted to listen to. And um, really, really, really enjoyed this album. This is good artwork, too. And um, I got to say, yeah, this is uh, number four, my choice of number four album of the year. And don't forget, my wheelhouse is not hugely wide. I, I zero in on artists that I tend to already know. And uh, <laughs> the next three kind of prove that. Um, because and maybe I'm a bit biased in why this is my top three, but you know, they're, they're artists that I've loved for many years, but I think the fact that they're still putting out amazing albums at this time is, is fantastic. So let's start with Peter Gabriel. This is IO and, um, this is his first album in 20 years. And again, this has been talked about a lot when it came out. A lot of people did videos and a lot of people put it on their list. And um, it is what it is. It's Peter Gabriel and you can't really go wrong. But the fact that this is like, what, six decades later, yeah, maybe seven. I haven't done the math. And uh, this is the work that he's put out. It's incredible. And... Um, it's it's a great album. It, it's it's this album, this album is like fine wine. It will improve with time, and it's fantastic. That's my number three. My number two is uh, Noel Gallagher, and again, you know, I'm the biggest Oasis head in the vinyl community, probably. And uh, this is Noel's latest album, uh, Council Skies, with his High Flying Birds. I thought this was very good. I thought it was maybe his second best of his solo albums. And, uh, you know, the lyrics are great. The sound, um, the, you know, improvement of the of the of the process that he's going through to 
kind of move away from Oasis but still create another, um, you know, sound is fantastic because that's kind of Noel's thing, right? Like Oasis had a sound and that sound was developed by Noel. And um, this is just taking that in another direction. It's very much now getting to the point where you go, that's the high flying birds, right? And um, yeah, this is great. Council Skies, Noel Gallagher, High Flying Birds, um, great album. And my favorite album of 2023, drum roll please, um, has to be Blur, The Ballad of Darren. Uh, what an album. What a return to form. The fact that these guys have come back with an album of this caliber is insane. There's not many bands that can go back to where they came from. This is as good as the, as the best Blur albums that are out there. I absolutely think this album is fantastic. I'm so jealous that they toured in the UK. And uh, I've seen a couple of things on YouTube where people went to see them. And they sounded amazing. Um, God, God, it's such a good album. I've listened to this nonstop. It's Brit Rock. It's uh, Blur. <laughs> it's exactly what it should be. And it's beautiful. And I love it. And that's my number one album of 2023. Blur, The Ballad of Darren. So there you go, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. I enjoy doing these top tens. I've got a new room set up. I've got new equipment. I've got new shelving. I need to do another room tour. And um, I'm hoping to do that early in the new year. So anyway, best of the season. Happy New Year. And thanks for watching. Pretty Green Guy, out.